it in the middle of August. Uh, but before we get to any of that, uh, let's uh, talk to uh, Connor Tomlinson. He's a he's from the uh, he's a policy director at British Conservative Alliance and uh, also a Young Voices UK contributor. Uh, good evening, Connor. Evening, Kevin. Thank you much for having me on. Uh, now, I, I've been talking tonight. The theme of tonight really is, uh, yes, of course, we're all in a massively celebratory mood because, oh, my God, England have made it to a major tournament final for the first time since 1966. And, of course, we're celebrating the football. But I think you'll agree there's something else going on as well. The nation is celebrating coming out of lockdown. It is almost aggressively regardless of what the doomsayers of SAGE and the government say, we are aggressively taking back our freedom. Uh, you're not going to lock us down anymore. Uh, there's something going on, isn't there? Yeah, I don't think there's much more of a British symbol than the people that were climbing on top of the bus the other night. Um, I wrote a piece about this earlier in the week, and that is essentially that, obviously, as all the talk radio talking kids have been saying for quite a while, this doesn't end until we say it does. And we've essentially got to lead the politicians by the nose with a bit of British sentiment in keeping calm, carrying on, and just getting on with the lives that we were supposedly working so hard to save this whole time. Um, it's funny as well that the politicians themselves, we're, our behaviour is finally catching up with what they've been doing for ages because they were walking around the G7 without any of the mass social distancing, arm and arm, etc. Yeah. And then now uh, you see them at the, uh, the sports game, same with the media class. You've got Piers Morgan the other other week saying no the restrictions are, are reckless to be lifted similar to Keir Starmer and then he's got he's got a photo of his arm around his mate and his mask off at the uh, at the game the other day so we, we're we're essentially playing catch up to their to their hypocrisy but it's nice to see everyone sort of banding together and, and getting on with things again really having a good time yeah I was uh, talking about this last night this kind of weird a parallel universe we seem to be living in. You know, Keir Starmer saying, oh, it's so reckless. We're coming out too early. Sage warning us we may have to carry on with restrictions until next spring. There'll be more waves. Oh, God, we're still in the coronavirus crisis. And then the you sky look, is falling. Yeah, and then, and then you look at Wembley uh, on Wednesday night and you look at the fan parks up and down the country and the pubs and the restaurants where everyone was watching the game and jumping all all over each other not a mask in sight no social distancing so there's the kind of world uh, the the weird universe of Keir Starmer and the gang and what the people of Britain are doing we are living in parallel universes aren't we well it's like you said about uh, uh, football being regarded as a working class sport and we've very much had a, a distinction under COVID of the hobby haves and hobby have nots it's like when they were talking about all the travel restrictions back way back when when you'd be fined for going abroad a certain amount without a valid reason when you came back it essentially it didn't mean that people weren't going to go abroad it just constituted an exit tax that the political class could pay mm -hmm. and and fly to go away and and now we've got it as to where people are finally again playing catch up with the with the political class who've been able to mm -hmm. hobnob for ages and we haven't and it's it's just nice to see everyone getting together do you think uh, that uh, what's going on now with boris and the government is they've seen uh, that the people have kind of voted with their masks, if you like, they've thrown their masks off and they're saying no more. So Boris saying, right, we're, we're going to get back to freedom on July the 19th and uh, progress more and more towards normality. Uh, he's doing that because he's a bit worried that if he doesn't, uh, no one will comply with whatever instructions he wants to give us anyway. Um, I... Considering him and Witty didn't exactly rule out not reimposing restrictions back in autumn, yeah. uh, and uh, there's a provision in the recent bill that allowed them to extend the coronavirus emergency powers way past winter, I'd be very surprised. I think it might just be expedient political capital in the meantime, yeah. um, even though apparently all the polls are coming out saying, oh, everyone wants to be locked inside their homes and I'm behind the sofa again. I wouldn't believe those for a minute. Hey, I was going to say, I was going to say, Connor, I, I, I just don't trust these polls. Well, these polls are saying, oh, people are saying, you know, they want to wear masks forever and socially distance forever. The, the, the mood of the nation is still very worried about coronavirus. Well, they didn't poll anyone at Wembley. They didn't poll anyone at any of these pubs or restaurants or fan parks on Wednesday night. Who the hell were they polling? Uh, there's a selection bias for people who have the time to sit indoors and take polls, which are usually the sort of people who don't like other people and who work from home all the time. I actually take these polls to do a bit of a countervailing thing and because YouGov pay you for it. Uh, but also 
they're not taking into account this was a thing around the 2016 election and, and brexit for example they don't take into the account the uh, go away constituency whenever someone approaches you again with a clipboard or sends you an email taking the poll because mm-hmm. most people don't believe um, that that say essentially we won't want this that it's worth taking the poll in the first place so you're you you're having a very vocal majority that are completely silent and of course they get asked questions along the lines of in order to save millions of lives yeah. would you agree with more restrictions of course the framing is never given yeah exactly right uh so i just don't believe it i think that the vast majority of people in this country now want their lives back they want freedom back they want uh, not the new normal they want the old normal would you agree yeah, and it's, I mean, it's become fairly obvious with the fact that well before the, the restrictions were lifted, people were just going about, you know, going around each other's houses, etc. Some people were still taking awkward precautions, but, you know, whenever I met people, they were like, oh, I can wear a mask if you like, and immediately, really? Come on. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I mean, I'd quite like to be able to see your face when I'm in a conversation with you. But. Yes, exactly. Uh, another aspect of what is going on, what we saw on Wednesday night and the continuing celebratory atmosphere here, which, as I say, is, I, in my view, about much more than just football. Of course, the football is brilliant. Uh, mm-hmm. But this is a nation kind of exploding out of lockdown, uh, reclaiming its freedom. And also, I think we're seeing the proper complexion of this nation which has got nothing to do with what the woke warriors have been telling us for the past year, that this is a racist hellhole Mm. divided by race and class. What the people we saw celebrating England the other night uh, were of all colours, denominations and creeds uh, draped in the St George's flag. Uh, So I think that what we're seeing here, if not a killer blow to Wokery, it's going to give Wokery a really hard time. And I think Wokery uh, will wither and die. I wouldn't be that optimistic considering the level it's permeated a lot of the institutions. I mean, for, for example, you have things like Coca-Cola and the, and the America's military industrial complex saying they're committed to equity and telling their employees to be less white. So we've got a lot of corporations <laughs> that have that. Um, also, we've still got, we've still got uh, um, anti, uh, anti-bias anti training, which the founders of the test have come out and said it's not meant to be used for that purpose, being taught to MPs. And most of the Tory MPs didn't exempt themselves from it, even though they're meant to be apparently the bulwark against this sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, I know. Um, but it, that sort of discourse has played out in the whole taking the knee thing and also people exempting to the uh, Pride Month armband. Mm. And it's essentially people turning around and saying, even though it's been characterised by everyone from Keir Starmer to Gary Lineker to Gareth Southgate himself as racist, anti-patriotic and criticising the black players, mm. people boo the taking of the knee because of what it sa- stands for. It's either a, a gesture of subservience because most people only ever kneel to your wife, your God and uh, and uh, the Queen, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, it's either a gesture of subservience to an organisation which has said we are trained organisers, we are trained Marxists and are responsible for $4 billion in property damage last year in the US. Or it's to say we, the very well paid, educated, uh, morally righteous uh, sports stars need to lecture to the poor oppressed class that you need to have our solidarity in order to get through life. So it's either a, a show of uh, uh, political allegiance or it's essentially white supremacy of the guilty conscience and the fans have gone no sod off and you can tell it's specifically that and that they're saying the propriety of the gesture because they don't boo players when they make the sign across the when they run on the pitch and they immediately clap all of the players when they score a goal so it's got nothing to do with race for example it's all to do with merit i'm glad you brought that up because uh, my line on it is uh you know uh, the fans are totally entitled to boo whatever they want to boo, actually, even another team's national anthem, because it's an expression of freedom of speech. It might not be the nicest thing to do, uh, mm. but why shouldn't they be able to do it? It's a free country, and certainly they should be allowed to boo uh, the taking of the knee. And the reason they boo the taking of the knee is not because they're racist and not because they want to stamp on anti-racist gestures. It's because they view... English or British footballers taking the knee as groveling to Black Lives Matter, an extremist organisation that wants to defund the police, smash capitalism and destroy the nuclear family. Uh, Why do you think, Connor, that uh, Gareth Southgate, the FA and the football authorities uh, will not disassociate themselves from Black Lives Matter? If they said this, we disassociate ourselves from BLM uh, and if you must take the need to take the need to kick it out, uh, uh, problem solved, but they won't do it. Why do you think they won't do that? 
well, it's, it's funny that you said take the knee to kick it out. I remember a time where there was a campaign called Stand Up for Racism. So it, it seems we're just going to be doing a pogo stick for against racism very soon. Yeah. Um, but I think it's because BLM employs semantic overload, essentially. So they take a non-objectionable statement, which is, of course, Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, of each individual do. life yeah, matters, yeah, yeah. and then uses that as a, as a Trojan horse for, um, again, Marxism. And that's why, I'm, I'm sorry, I was listening to the show from the start. Richard is absolutely wrong to say it's okay to be a communist, because if you go back and read the text of Marx and Engels, they explicitly say we want violent, bloody revolution to kill our political uh, opposition. And that's why every single time Marxism has been implemented in countries around the world, it's ended in genocide and it won't work. Um, I think they won't denounce it, the FA and uh, Gareth Southgate, is because they're possessed with the idea that it is inclusive and they've got a low resolution perception of what the symbol stands for. And because they think that they're, they're wedded to making everyone happy, the problem is you're going to make nobody happy because you haven't actually understood what the implication behind the gesture is. And when you've got people like Navarra Media and the uh, the Daily Worker paper coming out and backing this gesture, maybe you should reconsider exactly what, what you're standing for that you don't particularly understand. Absolutely. Uh, there were people on Twitter today saying that uh, the uh, sort of triumphant uh, achievement of gareth southgate was to get the players mm. to take the knee and that's why they've been winning nothing could be further from the truth i think to be fair to richard uh he wasn't backing communism he was just backing anybody's right if they want uh to say there to be a communist i mean we are a free but country. That, but yes we, we are a free country but then you but then richard would not say the same about nazism and it's it's very confusing to me especially considering communism has a far higher body count not that that measures moral correctness but that he would not say the same about nazism brilliant mm. then he says it's okay to be a communist well that just betrays i'm sorry i, I, I really like richard i think his anti-lockdown uh, sentiment has been a breath of fresh air in the mainstream mm. media but it betrays that he hasn't read the core texts and frankly everyone it should be mandatory mm -hmm. so yeah okay fair enough uh, that's your view um but yes the uh, taking the knee uh wait you wait connor uh the thing about taking the knee was it prospered when football was incubated from fans it was happening on pitches where there were no crowds uh when the new season starts you wait you wait there may be trouble ahead there's going to be a lot of booing uh and i'll be there and i'll be booing as well uh and but don't forget some fans were banned from their clubs they even tried to criminally charge them for that that is an expression of freedom of speech and uh, uh they must be allowed to boo whatever the hell they want to boo uh great talking connor uh please come on again connor tomlinson there he's a policy director at the british conservative alliance and for the young voices you he's a young voices uk contributor i'm kevin o'sullivan and this is talk radio online on dab and on the talk radio app talk radio